Visual Basic Syntax is hard to grasp at first if you've never learned a programming language, but if you look closely, you'll realize that there are nouns, verbs, adjectives, and adverbs. Its sentence structure is similar to English in many ways. I encourage you to bookmark this link or come back to it and watch the video later because this is a very core fundamental step in learning the language. Let's begin. Here we've got a chart that kind of explains the VBA component and the equivalent English component. So what we have here to start with is an object, which we're going to give you examples of how that's similar to a noun. And then a collection is a plural noun, a method is a verb, a parameter is an adverb, and a property is an adjective. Now without great examples, it's kind of hard to remember that. But keep in mind that you can come back to this part of the video to take a screenshot of this slide, to save for later, and reference whenever you want. All right, now brace yourselves because this this next tab that I'm going to show you is just so cool. You're going to be really impressed. Okay, haha, just kidding. Um, I'm going to go over some examples of how to kind of remember these with layman's terms and not jumping straight into the objects that you actually have within Visual Basic. So I like to use this analogy of a house. And so the house itself, you would kind of think of as similar to the application. The application is Excel, but let's think of a house. And so within a house, you've got multiple rooms. And so these rooms, plural, is similar to the concept of a collection. I've got many rooms, and the way that I would refer to them is with rooms, simply with an S at the end. Now, if I want to refer to a specific room, then I would need to go by the actual name of that room, which is room one, two, three, and four. So here, if you imagine this is you, you're writing code, and instead of into an editor, you're just gonna write it here in this little dialog box. And we're going to say rooms. And I begin by referring to the collection, the plural version of my noun, and opening the parentheses and typing a quote, a single quote. And then inside of the quotes, I'm going to give the specific name of the room, so room three. OK, so now what I've done is within a set collection, I'm indicating which specific object, AKA like a noun, we're going to refer to. And so since my person is in room three, this happens to just coincidentally be the room that I'm in, but I don't actually have to be in a room to be able to reference it. And so when I say being in a room, that that's analogous to right now I'm in sheet house, but right now I'm in sheet language, and right now I'm in sheet three. So by saying I'm in something, I mean it's active. It's the item that's been selected or the object that's been selected. And uh, if I don't specify which sheet to refer to, Visual Basic is going to default to whatever I have active and whatever is visible to the end user. And so in this case, the analogy that I'm trying to provide for you is that the idea of this person being in this room, inside room three, is that this is the active room that this person is in right now. So right now this, this person says rooms, quote, room three, quote, parentheses, dot. And what's happening here is I'm going to do a concept that's kind of like a noun. And then what can I do within a room? I can enter the room, dot enter. And so the structure that we're working with here is collection, or it's really noun, plural, noun, specific, dot, verb. Now let's think of a different example if we were to talk about room four. So rooms, room four, sorry, I'm trying to keep things consistent here dot window. Now I've given you an example with window here that within window we have different properties, we have different verbs, and so these properties, let's talk about the properties. These are like adjectives and they're descriptive pieces of the object itself. So the window noun object has a height, it has a width, it has a material, that material happens to be glass. Let's say that the height is five and the width is six. 
So if I was to say window dot height, I would get six. If I was to say house dot address, here I've got properties of house. Then I would get 1617 West Shore Ave, San Francisco, California. And so here, this, this sentence structure that we're working with is noun. Well, up here, we did noun, plural, noun, specific, sub-noun. So, so this is an object that exists within another object. So within the specific room, room four, there was a window, which is another noun that exists within the other noun. And then the descriptive property, which is an adjective. And then the next one, the house itself, it doesn't exist within another noun. It's just a standalone, you know, the application itself. It exists within your computer, but you don't actually need to specify that because that's not how the language works. And so house.address is really easy to type out, right? And so you're probably wondering if you're following on really closely. When I typed in this concept of a window, right? And I said, okay, well, where does the window exist? The window exists in room four. And so you're probably thinking, well, why didn't I need to indicate that the room exists within the house? We're going to go over that a little bit more soon, but I don't need to tell my Visual Basic code that I'm in the application. And so here the house is like the analogy of the application. The assumption is, well, yeah, absolutely, we're in the house. There's not any other houses around. So let's just assume we're talking about one specific house. And so, yes, absolutely, there are other applications within Microsoft. So there's the Outlook application, there's the Microsoft Word application, and there's bunches of other Microsoft applications. But by default, when you're in Visual Basic, the application is going to be assumed to be Excel. And so there might be situations where you're actually going to write out the application itself. But for our purposes, we're going to usually omit the word application when we're writing code. So kind of like how I omitted the word house when specifying that there was a room that we wanted to interact with, I'm going to omit the word application later in my code. But if I wanted to interact with the application, I, I definitely, I absolutely could do that. Um, now let's go on to talk about this idea of how to execute a verb. So just like in English, you have an adverb. So you're describing how something happens, right? So if I wanted to describe exactly how a window opens, then I'm going to use a, a descriptor here, Excel. Well, we're going to use Excel all the way or Excel half of the way. So there's two ways to execute an, a verb, right? The syntax is either going to look like this, noun dot. I mean, we could stick to our setup, noun plural noun dot verb. And then XL param. So that's going to be whatever parameter that I happen to be working with. And then the other way that I could do this, and there's really just two different syntaxes. And so you'd see them both if you were going through looking at other people's forms. It's really just depending on what that person's personal preference is. But we're going to go over both. We could say how colon equals XL param. And there's benefits to both. So it's either one or the other. You're either going to put your adverb inside parentheses or you're going to put your adverb in a colon equals statement where you're associating a specific execution with a descriptor. And that'll make more sense as time goes on, but just keep in mind that there are two totally different syntaxes here on how to handle verbs. Let's go ahead and look at that with Visual Basic because I realize it's completely a stretch to try and continue with this analogy for too long. Okay, so what I have here is a module. If you don't have a module yourself, go ahead and right click and then insert. And it's okay if your module is called one or two. We're just gonna start with a fresh one here for today's example. I'm gonna call my procedure sub my pros and hit enter. 
I need to start this procedure with a alphabetic character. No numbers or symbols can come at the beginning. If you want to have anything like a space inside of your name for the procedure, you can use an underscore. Now, if I'm going to work with a collection, so for example, if I'm going to do work sheets, it says default index as object. That's not super helpful, so try to rely back on your analogy to think of worksheets as being the collective objects of all the worksheets that exist within your workbook. And so you can see over here on the left within the Project Explorer, you have house, you have language, you have sheet three, and they all exist within your workbook. And so if I say worksheets, it's referring to all of these worksheets, right? There's three of them. So if I want to specifically interact with sheet three, then I could specify uh, something that I can do about this worksheet. So for example, I can extract the name out of it. I realize it's not the most exciting thing, but we're just going to do that really quick. Let's say my name is a variable, and whatever I type on the left of the equal sign is going to assume the value of whatever's on the right of the equal sign. Now I'm going to run through this code one line at a time by clicking F8 slowly. F8, I'm going to hit F8 one more time, and one more time, and I see sheet 3 has been extracted from this object here, okay? And so now, if we, let's go one step deeper, how we talked about objects existing within objects. So within a workbook, you have worksheets. Within worksheets, you have a range. And within each layer, the workbook has methods that it can execute or things that can be executed on it. So those, again, those are called methods. So the workbook has methods, things that can be done to it, things that can be done by it. And then the worksheets also have methods, things that can be done to the worksheet, things that can be done by the worksheet. And then the same thing with the ranges and the cells that exist within the worksheets. Now, keep in mind, you also have adjectives, which are descriptive properties. So this here was like an adjective. It's a name that's being extracted out of the worksheet object. So it is a property of that worksheet in a way. And I mean, really, the name is a property. And it's I'm using the word adjective as an analogy, but you really want to call this a property. OK. And so now here, if I was to say worksheets dot sheet three dot copy, this is a verb that I don't necessarily have to describe how to execute it. Like by itself, it can run so I can drag this up. And I can re-execute that line of code, even though it didn't exist a moment ago. I wrote it, I dragged my execution line up, and I'm going to hit F8 once. And what that did was it made a complete copy of sheet 3 in a different workbook, which is just kind of a fun thing to show you that you can at any moment just copy something, and it'll create a copy if you do it on the workbook or the sheet itself. And then if I wanted to say workbooks, Let's use the workbooks collection. So I'm not going to specify any one given workbook, right? I'm going to specify the entire concept of workbooks, as in all workbooks open. What can I do with workbooks? And there is an open method. And so workbooks.open is how I would say open another workbook. And if I was to hit a space, I have two ways to go about it. I'm prompted here with file name as string. So this is kind of like my adverb. This is my descriptive of how something is going to execute. So if I type file name colon equals, that was one way to go about it. So I can type in my file path here. Or I could just do a parentheses and then put file path here. This isn't a full example because I'm not actually putting in a file path or executing it, but both are completely valid syntax, right? So I could say workbooks.open file name colon equals file path here. Okay, and so that's just a couple examples. And so to give you, oops, I shouldn't put a parenthesis there. To give you a quick overview of how that relates back to sentence structure, this was uh, going to be similar to a noun dot, say noun plural. And then your specific noun dot adjective. And then this is noun. Oh. And if I'm going to put something that's not executable code, I should put a single quote mark at the beginning. That turns it into a comment line, which means that it won't 
do anything if my yellow bar runs past it or if I hit play and just run all the code at once. And so here, this is like noun, plural, noun, dot, verb. And then here, this is noun, plural. I'm not going to put a specific noun. And then I'm going to put verb and then adverb. So that's my how something is being executed. And then uh, lastly, just a slightly different syntax does the exact same thing as the adverb like that, right? And so now let's go one step further and translate these into VBA terms. This is going to be collection, object name, dot property. And then this is going to be collection object name dot verb or dot method this is collection dot method parameter and collection dot method type colon equals parameter. All right, so that concludes our overview of the sentence structure. And in the next video, we're going to be going over how to declare your variables. Uh, and again, a variable is something that I've created. It's a custom made item that's going to assume something else. So I'm going to make some kind of assignment and use that later in my code. So we're going to be going over how to do that with objects themselves, object properties and parameters. Uh, so for example, here I extracted out the name. I did not assign the object itself to a variable. So we're going to be going over some slight distinctions there, as well as common data types that are used within Visual Basic, as well as other programming languages. I hope to join you soon.